Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is your mental health hookup with Barbara Wilson. I am your host, Jason Downs, and we are so glad that you've joined us here today for another wonderful and informative episode of Mental Health Hookup. What does this mean, Patty? <laughs> oh, no, I was just doing this. I'm like, okay. we're good to go. I'm just like pumped Excellent. up. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Patty is in a very good mood today, Barbara. I don't know if you noticed. We're, we're so thankful to have Barbara Wilson in the, in the studio again with us today. And how are you? I am good. I am really, really good. I'm really excited that we are past the darkest day of the year. And, uh, you know, it's actually daylight at 5 o'clock. Yay. I love sunlight. That's why I live in Valencia. Yes, yes, indeed. So as we did last time, I want to invite anyone listening to to call in. So we're going to remind you of the number every now and then. It's 661-298-5487, and Patty will screen those calls for us. But um, Barbara Wilson, I just want to remind everyone that uh, she has a Master of Social Work degree, and has worked as a licensed clinical therapist in the state of California for the past 50 years. And she's done some amazing work here and continues to do amazing work here. So please feel free to, to call in and, and get a chance to speak to her today. Mental Health Hookup is a nonprofit and is dedicated to providing clinical support to families affected by serious mental illness in the Santa Clarita Valley and beyond. So whatever your mental health services, um, whatever your needs are, mental health hookup can provide. Or they hook you up with someone who can. They really should be your first and last stop for mental health in the Santa Clarita Valley. So if you or a member of your family or anyone you know is suffering from mental illness, reach out and make an appointment today at mentalhealthhookup.org or by calling 661 799 7994 to speak to a live agent 24 hours a day. Now, this is a special broadcast that we're going to start doing once a month here at KHTS, your hometown station, because mental health is important to us, and we believe it is important to the well-being of all of us here in Santa Clarita and beyond. So, having said all of that, today's topic with Barbara, we're going to cover a couple of things, but but uh, why don't you tell us what is on your heart today and what you'd like to speak about? Well, thank you so much for having me again. Um, I really appreciate it. It's, it. It is really very special to have conversations about mental health. I like to say that mental health is the last thing that is still closeted. So you can get elected, for example, to public office if you are gay, but if you have a mental health history, not so much. Still a stigma. Nothing against gay people. I don't, so please don't write in to K Hits and say I'm slamming gay people. That is not my point. No, my no. point is that we need to be able to talk about mental health issues out loud. And I am pleased, therefore, that um, I have the opportunity to have this space, which I consider holy. Uh, to talk about some of the things that affect people, affect families, and perhaps um, people don't know where to go to talk about that. Uh, if you have a, what is a mental health problem? Is this really a mental health problem? Should I, who should I talk to, and all of that? Um, those are discussions that we can have, and, and uh, I'm just, this speaks to stigma and the fact that people are often ashamed. Um, to acknowledge that maybe they're not sleeping well or maybe they're having um, prolonged concerns about the behaviors of their loved ones, but they don't really know what to do about them without um, bringing shame on the family. So all of those things. I'm just real grateful for this space and this time. Well, we're grateful for you and the work that you do. So thank you, as always. As far as the topic for today, we've got a couple of options. So what, uh, what do you want to start with? I want to start with voice. Um, 
because we also wanted to kind of dedicate, we were supposed to have this show last week on Martin Luther King's birthday, but uh, it was a national holiday. That was about service. (laughs) So I think we can sort of combine the two because they really do work together. uh, And... So when you say voice, what do you mean? Well, you know, Martin Luther King um, dedicated his life to advocating for the right of African Americans to vote. But if we look back at the history of America, originally not only African Americans, women were not allowed to vote. Um, White people that didn't own property were not allowed to vote. So we've come a very long way in changing and adapting who has a right to speak their truth in our government. And that's what kind of took me to voice. Because what is vote? Well, vote is actually saying, this is what I think, this is what I feel, this is who I want to lead us. Um, So when we talk about voice, I got to, it took me to thinking about who has voice and who does not have voice? For example, do children have a voice? Well, if you're a parent, do they have a voice? How old do they have to be to have a voice? Um, I would argue that a toddler has voice. We just may not like what he's saying. Um, (laughs) But do they have the power of disruption? Absolutely, so they have power. If you don't attend to their voice, they can disrupt the whole family from dinner, right? So that got me thinking about the relationship between voice, listening to voice, acknowledging people having voice, and their relationship to the power structure. So if the power in my generation, it was dad. It was wait till your dad gets home. I'm going to tell, you know, we're going to have a talk, young lady, when your dad gets home. He walks to the door tired from work, and mom is there saying, you will not believe what your daughter just said, did, or whatever I had done wrong. Uh, Things have changed a lot since then, I'm sure. But, you know, dad was the one that had the perceived power. So we all kind of made nice around whatever dad wanted to watch on television. Did I want to watch boxing? Not really. You know, but we watched boxing. We watched all the shows. Even when Dad walked in the door, Mom would change the channel to what Dad would like to see. So so there's a level of power and equity in voice. And so that's kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit today because what do we know about voice? Well, as a therapist in mental health, we know that voice is very healing that when a person can speak to a person about their experience and what they experience without being judged, without dire consequences, Mm. that there is power of healing just in that process. We know, for example, that there's research that shows that women who uh, lived in war zones where they were brutally sexually assaulted, sometimes with bayonets being rammed in their private parts and all of that. The shame of that, the pregnancies that resulted from that, all of that was debilitating to these women, but when people got them together and they could stand in a circle and speak the reality of their shame of what had been done to them and weep and be listened to, healing began. So we know, with, without a doubt, you don't have to have, you know, uh, a million dollars a day to pay for therapy. You just need to have someone who is consistent, non-judgmental, willing to hear you out and go, okay, here's some clinics, honey. They're there. It's going to get better. That is where the healing begins. And that is something we can all do um, but mostly we don't. Why is it that that we are so afraid to to speak? O- oft, I mean, you know, often, especially when we... That's when a we... really good question, and one of the answers is power. Um, I grew up in the South, full disclosure. We have things, I'll, I watch Southern women are masters at manipulation, but they don't speak it. 
they'll go, oh, honey, I really need you to pick, you know, reach and get this package from the top shelf. And you're the only one who can do that. Now, she knows she could call five other people to get that done. But she calls her man to get that done. And he puffs out his feathers and he goes, there, there, little lady, I got this covered. And so he goes and he reaches whatever it is and he hands it off to her. And she goes, my hero, thank you so much. You know, but everyone who's ever grown up in the South knows that the real power broker is mom. If you want to get something passed by dad, you got to go to mom first because mom's got the She's got the real juice on dad. But she can't speak it. She's going to come in the side door with his favorite meal. And, you know. So that paradigm that you've been describing in these in these stories, you think is just so ingrained that, especially for women, it sounds like. It is ingrained, it's often but hard it also to speaks give voice to, to, to the power inequity. Because if the man is the one with the money, and if we are uh, socialized to believe that only the man should have the money, then he is the one, then his power is derived, therefore, from money and his access to resources. Then mom's power comes from being associated with dad, right? So then the kids watch the dynamic and they go, okay, dad's the one we've got to get to, but then how do we get dad to vote our way? That's the tough sell. Oh, let's go to mom. Let's convince mom that, you know, we really do need this pair of sneakers that cost so $100. So is therapy essentially a safe place where absolutely. inequity can finally it's absolutely live and breathe? Is that, is that essentially how we're billing it <laughs> it's a safe place where inequity lives yes yes that's that puts it very well um it's a safe and what makes it safe not it, inequity i'm so i'm sorry i think i'm misspeaking i'm saying it's a safe place it's where a safe place equality, where inequity can be exposed where, or people yes. can just have the space. inequity is no longer a barrier that's 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 it. what i meant to or say or that they can say take a look and say is there inequity mm -hmm. you know uh i as you know, I work a lot with mothers, in particular, not only mothers, but in particular, I work with a lot of mothers who are between the ages of 65 and 85, and they have an adult child who's maybe in their 40s or 50s um, who suffer from serious mental illness. Now, those mothers may not be aware that they're actually living with domestic violence because they're not getting hit. Hmm. But... If mom says to the son, no, I won't give you any more money. You've spent all the money that you have for the month. And he threatens to go to the hutch and take out grandma's teacup that she brought over on the Mayflower. Now mom's going to give him the money because she wants that cup and saucer not to get broken. That's intimidation. Sure. But does my Mom feel, we'll just call her Janie. Does Janie feel like she's being, she's living in domestic violence? No. She associates a domestic violence as some brutal guy beating the snot out of his girlfriend. Right. I mean, we, we recognize that today as, as verbal abuse, right? Um, or economic abuse. But it's so, it's often really difficult to give voice to those types of things because I don't know about you, but and I'm sure you've come across this a hundred hundred times. But once you're in the room and asked to define, okay, what is the infraction, or what, why are you here, or what did he do to you, or what, you know, what are your list of complaints? It's it's often hard to articulate. That exactly. is the therapeutic process. Yeah. My okay. experience with therapy uh, is that probably sixty percent of the process is allowing the person to self-define what is their problem mm. because they may come in because the popcorn didn't get popped correctly but in discussing it it's like well you know maybe it really goes back to something that happened at church well maybe it wasn't such you know and so as they trace back the problem they begin to self-define and refine 
to identify what is really the problem. I, I think once people really get clear about what the problem is, they come up with their own solutions pretty quickly. They may not act on them pretty quickly, but they become clear about what is really the problem. And yeah, I see what the problem really is, is that you know, when he drinks, he acts differently towards me and the kids, and, and I need to take some action there. And there's a lot of power in giving voice to that finally, in, in that search for the vocabulary and, and the clarification. So do you find that uh, this, this issue of, of giving voice to the complaints, the problems, or, or the inequities that, that people experience, do you find that that is more difficult for women to overcome, or do you find that just as often in men that you see? I th- that's an interesting question. I think it's almost more about, I'm, I mean, I'm not a researcher, so I can't say one or the other. Who comes to me in my practice is usually the female, um, just because a lot of times it's the mom that's really concerned about how the family is functioning, whereas the dad, and I'm using this very stereotypically because there are dads that are very, very involved, um, but many times the dads go away to work, and so they're not facing it on an hour-by-hour, minute-by-minute difficulty. Mm-hmm. Whereas I have a family right now that I'm seeing, for example, and then they have three kids, you know, from, I would say, between 5 and 15, all boys, um, all very active, bright, smart, fidgety boys. And, you know, she's a stay-at-home mom. He works two jobs so that she can be a stay-at-home mom but you know she's fried and then how does that impact the overall family how does that impact her self-image as a woman as a sexy woman you know when she's exhausted chasing behind these kids and they're in school they're not in school they're in school today they're out of school tomorrow I mean you know it's a tough time uh, for for families, and it's especially a tough time on the moms. Um, but I think the person who is the breadwinner, I want to say, is the one that has some way of escaping the chaos, and the one who is the stay at home on the boots on the grounds person, whether that's the mom or uh, most often it's the mom, but it's not always the mom. That is the person that is really dealing with the day to day. Ups and downs. So um, it can be both. I want to remind everyone we're speaking to Barbara Wilson here. Uh, this is a special broadcast at KHTS Mental Health Hookup. We welcome your calls because uh, Barbara's here in the studio to to talk about this topic today of of just giving voice to. Really to mental health. I mean, we started out saying how it's still stigmatized. It's still difficult to to talk about. Um, But this is a safe space. You don't need to to, uh, identify yourself. And certainly when you work with someone like Barbara, you have complete confidentiality. So feel free to call in. It's 661-298-5487. 661-298-5487. We have Patty standing by to screen those calls. So if I were to come in to your office, right, and I'm someone who's, who's never, who's never, been to see a therapist and has never really given voice to this sort of work, right? This kind of internal, self-reflective type of work as a man, you know, speaking as a man. Uh, what What is that? I mean, is it a scary process? Should I be... <laughs> How how painful is it? <laughs> <laughs> we try really hard to make it very easy and very smooth. Uh, so one of the things I do before we set up an appointment is we have a phone interaction. Um, because maybe I'm not the right person for you, in which case I will 
tell you, you know, two or three other places that you can go. Uh, or maybe you're living in a situation that warrants a level of intervention above what an individual practitioner can do. And I'll tell an example. I had a lady call in. Um, she was very distraught. She was a grandmother, and she and her husband lived here locally. Um, her daughter and son-in-law were also there, and son-in-law was a practicing addict and was pr engaging in threatening behaviors to the grandchildren that were toddlers, one of whom was a toddler. That is above my pay grade. So I gave her a number to call, and we got that situation resolved in a, a matter of a few hours. Mm. Okay, so that was an em a quasi-emergency situation. Mm -hmm. That is not something that we do as private practitioners, but we can guide a person to where they to need the to right be. Place. So yeah. that would be hookup. There you go. You hooked them up with, <laughs> with someone who could right. help them in that instance. All right, well, stay with us right here on Mental Health Hookup here at KHTS. We're, we're talking about giving voice to ourselves and, and our issues and mental illness with Barbara Wilson here today. When we come back, we're also going to talk about, about how being of service to other people can often lead to not being of service to ourselves. So again, we invite you to call in with any thoughts or questions, 661-298-5487. So we'll be right back here on KHTS 98.1 FM and AM 1220. This is Bradley Gross, Executive Director and one of the lead volunteers of Santa Clarita Grocery. We want to thank our sponsors who made our fourth annual Toy Town on Main Street a success, which brought Christmas to over 400 families in the Santa Clarita Valley. A big thank you to KHTS for the holiday tunes, Max Pool Supply for your parking lot, Louie and the Lions Club of Castaic for your Christmas float, Santa Clarita Coalition that allows us to bring humanitarian relief to Santa Clarita Valley, and to our sponsoring partners, Patty Narana Farmers Insurance, Tri-Scenic Production Services, Bulldog Liquidators, Hydrex Pest Control, RNS Automotive, Rosie Alcarez Loan Depot, Studio Work Rentals, Forza Construction, Target, Albertsons, California Highway Patrol, Chiquita Canyon Landfill, American Legion Squadron 507, We Calls Carpet and Flooring, Debbie Briscoe Century 21, DW Cookie Company, Madison Platter, Robert Small, Focus Physical Therapy, Dr. George Sharnock, Dr. Tom and Tony Pilecki, Bethlehem Lutheran Church, First Presbyterian Church Newhall, Haven House Church, and Real Life Charities. We're stronger together. You already know Salt Creek Grill has the best food in our valley. Well, now you can have Salt Creek's gourmet meals catered to your event. I'm Greg Amser, owner of Salt Creek Grill. I'd like to introduce you to a new level of catering, featuring our catering director, Tamara Levine. Salt Creek Grill creates memorable experiences, which leaves our clients and guests with a sense of awe and excitement. From menu development to picturesque presentation, you'll enjoy culinary excellence in creative catering. Salt Creek Grill, a new level of catering. Your hometown station, KHTS. Back to Mental Health Hookup with Barbara Wilson. I'm your host, Jason Downs. And this is a special broadcast here at KHTS, your hometown station, where we look at mental health because we believe it is important to the well-being of all of us here in Santa Clarita and beyond. We are with Barbara Wilson. She is a she has a master of social work and has worked as a licensed clinical therapist in the state of California for the past 50 years. Mental Health Hookup is a nonprofit and is dedicated to providing clinical support to families affected by serious mental illness. So whatever your mental health services, they can provide or they will hook you up with someone who can, as Barbara just illustrated with the last story she told us before the break. So if you or a member of your family are suffering from mental illness, then please reach out and make an appointment today at mentalhealthhookup.org or by calling 661 799 
7994 to speak to a live agent 24 hours a day. Make that appointment. So we've been talking about giving voice, just voice in general. In, in honor of Martin Luther King, we, uh, we were hoping to have a show last week, but we're having mm -hmm. it this week. So we still want to honor Martin Luther King today and, and all that he's, he's done for this country, past and present. And one of those things was giving voice to, to a lot of different issues. He certainly didn't call it mental illness at that time, but so oh, no. many, so many folks needed <laughs> needed a good therapist during the '60s. Am I right? Uh, and, and even those living through it and just watching the news needed a good therapist. Um, so you know, which is similar to where we are today. Just so much division, and and it really wears. It wears yes. on your heart and your soul and your psyche. And your mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly have felt that way. I was so run down at the end of this year, uh, at the end of 2021. I was so exhausted that I ended up getting COVID. I think I was just so exposed, you know, so worn down. That's right. And uh, just mentally and physically by, by this whole ordeal. So it, I, we're all going through this. We're all going through this in varying degrees, but it's going to, it, we're, Coming up on the two-year anniversary, yes. two yes. years of this, and so we all need a little help. We all need to give voice to what we're feeling and what we're going through, and that is what Barbara does for folks. We welcome your calls, 661-298-5487. She's right here in the studio, and, and she's uh, ready to listen want to also talk a little about being of service to others and how how that's a wonderful thing but we need to maintain that balance this was something ah, that you wanted that to talk the about real today difficulty. so you know there there again this past year i'm just going to relate this to myself and you can you can you can <laughs> analyze me. No. Uh, I mean, this, th this past year it was an exciting year of service for me because I really dedicated myself to a, a, a few different causes within the Rotary, uh, within Mental Health Hookup, things that are very important to me. Um, and I found that I was giving so much of myself mm -hmm. that it led to being burned out. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife, you know, would look at me and, and, and say things like, okay, so what are you doing to make money for you and your family? What are you doing for yourself? Or what, what happened to this creative outlet and that creative? It just got to that point mm -hmm. without me realizing. And, and, and all of these are good and positive things. And that's one of the ways that we rationalize it in our own mind, isn't it? That, that I'm doing good things. I'm doing good for people. Well, I think that it's not just rationalization. Um, burnout is a particular situation that occurs when people... Uh, my daughter has a friend that is a CPA kind of person, and he, when he heard what all I do, and I do it mostly for not much money, <coughs> he said, oh, your mom over-donates. <laughs> and I really have always, I like that phrase, and I kind of keep it uh, in my mind. Over because, donate, I like um, that. <laughs> I'm one of those Perfect. people that I'm not aware that I'm over donating until I'm so sick I'm in the hospital mm. because I just keep it going. Um, so this, for me, it's like how do I recognize what I'm over donating before I get sick? Because I don't want to go there. Yes. Um, so other recognizing people, the recognizing the signs. when you're on your way to, and and you don't know necessarily that you're on your way to there unless you've experienced it already. So it's kind of like you know if you're driving a car, and the car starts to steer off to one side, you may not know that you have an alignment problem, you know, and then you get it aligned and then you're better. So um, I think that is kind of, we don't want anyone to get to, 
to burn out. Mm -hmm. We don't want people mm -hmm. to get to suicide. We had a very a celebrity, I think, over the last few days. Uh, her son, beautiful yes. young man, committed mm -hmm. suicide. Mm -hmm. I've worked with people who have lost someone to suicide. And the first thing they want to know is, how come I didn't know? How come I didn't see it coming? And that's one of the scariest things about that sort of thing. Is so, where you, you feel like, wait a minute, I should have known. I just known. saw them yesterday, and we were jogging and everything. He never said a word. But that idea of, of, of I should have seen the signs yes. or I should have known. So, so how do you teach people to recognize those signs in themselves? Okay, I'm starting to over-donate. I'm starting to, you know, how, how in the world do you get that? I have a... Um, I'm a real simplistic person, and so I like simple, um, relatable explanations. So I have like a pie chart, and in your pie is 24, because you have exactly 24 hours in a day. No more, no matter how much more you've got to do, you've only got that 24. Now you have to take out one third, which is eight hours, for sleeping. Then you have to take out eight hours for career stuff, whether that's called work or, you know, macrame or whatever. Uh, and that only leaves you then eight hours to do everything else in your life that you need to get done, whether that's hmm. family time, spiritual that time, puts it in social time. It? <laughs> so, and I put all of that pie chart inside your hula hoop. So I'm old enough to remember when I used to hula hoop. Um, you're standing. I happen to be a very good hula hooper. Oh, <laughs> so you have. So then you understand that a hula hoop will only hold you. It won't hold you plus another person, correct? Mm -hmm. So if you only have 24 hours and eight hours has to be parked for sleeping, that leaves you 16 hours for everything else. But everything else you do is outside your hula hoop. What are the things inside your hula hoop? Things that pertain to you personally. You're brushing your teeth, combing your hair, getting dressed, feeding yourself. That is inside your hula hoop. Our children, we love them, but they're not inside our hula hoop. They have their own hula hoop. So when we don't pay attention enough to what's inside our hula or what's in our control, That's right. then it... Then we're on our way to, you know... Go some kind of... We're, we're out of balance. Imbalance. Imbalance. So, you know, one of the things I tell a lot of my clients, first thing, how's your sleep? Hmm. You know, if you're sleeping two hours a day, five hours a day because you've got so much to do that you just can't take the time to sleep, you're out of balance. I think I'm out of balance, Barbara. <laughs> uh, we, ha we, have, uh, we have Eddie on the line. Uh, so thank you so much, first of all, Eddie, for, for calling in. We're excited to have you. Barbara's here, and she is listening. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> yes, Barbara, how are you? I'm good, and you? Fine, thank you. I have a question. <clears throat> uh, to me, it appeared that you were a little defensive on this uh, question, but uh, do you consider... Homosexuality, lesbianism, transgendership, a mental health issue, or a normal human relationship? Oh, it's absolutely. Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank you for the question uh, and the opportunity for me to clarify that. I absolutely do not believe that uh, having a non gender, how, however you phrase it, I. I can't remember exactly, but that is not a mental health issue. If a person, however, is struggling with their family accepting them and their, um, their lesbian relationship, that might cause some depression and anxiety, particularly around family activities, Thanksgiving holiday meals and stuff. That c might be something to discuss in therapy. But the mere fact that they have a, a, a lesbian relationship, no, that's not mental. That has nothing to do with mental health. Okay, thank you. 
You're quite welcome. Eddie, do you have a follow-up question to that? No, no, that was it. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much for calling in. So, I mean, I think that is something that uh, that I think a lot of people may wonder, especially since all of this is finally, as, as we started out the show talking about how mental illness it still has a stigma, um, whereas homosexuality has less of a stigma nowadays. But this is a fairly recent development. It's very recent so, and not present in all cultures. Certainly not. Not present in all be- religious systems. Um, and not certainly not present in all families. And for so long, they it was viewed as a mental illness or a, or a defect or a, you know, this sort of thing, uh, Im- implying that they were... Defective. Not born that way. Defective in some way, yes. and they need to be fixed. Correct. Yes, and so when we look at the lived ex- uh, experience, again, speaking to voice, w- we used to lock people up in mental hospitals because and make them renounce their attraction to the same sex. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is one of the reasons why... Um, to this day, in the there is a debate going on right now all over the country and uh, put and in California as well and in our county, in fact. And the issue is about we have people who are homeless, who all, some of whom also have serious mental illness. So there is some movement politically to say someone ought to do something, and that's the rally and cry. Those people need to be scooped up for their own good and put somewhere away from us. Then there are other people that say, wait a minute, there is no other branch of medicine where people are forced to accept treatment. If you have cancer and need chemo and the doctor says to you, you either have this chemo or you're going to die, it is still left to the patient to decide if Hmm. they're going to have chemo or if they're going to go home and allow themselves to die. So there is this battle going on right now uh, in Sacramento. They had a hearing all day, December 15th, um, and about this very issue. And, they'll, you know, it was a very – for anybody that wants more information about that, I have a link I can send you. I won't take up today's time except to say this is a real policy issue that's being raised right now. And one of the reasons why this is back to – Uh, the issue of homosexuality was there was a time when homosexuality was defined as a form of mental illness and therefore people were locked up uh, and involuntarily, some of whom were involuntarily sterilized. So that means they were unable to have children, both males and females, Mm. because they were, quote, homosexuals. So we have a very dark history in that area and many people in today's world are, are terrified that we might go back to that if we start giving uh, medicine the right to lock people up involuntarily because we don't like the way they're living. Well, well thank you again so much for the, the call and the question. This is uh, a wonderful conversation, which will continue after the break. We're going to take uh, just a couple of minutes here. We're talking with Barbara Wilson. She is a clinical therapist here for 50 years, and we're taking calls, uh, so stay with us right here on KHTS 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Healthcare can be difficult if you're underinsured or have Medi-Cal. Samuel Dixon Family Health Center can help. Services are available on a sliding fee schedule. The mission of the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center is to give the Santa Clarita Valley access to affordable, quality primary care. There are three locations to serve you, Canyon Country, Newhall, and Valverde. Go to sdfhc.org for more information and to find the location most convenient for you. It's great to be in Santa Clarita. This is Charlie Kirk inviting you to join me every weekday from 4 till 7. We'll be exploring the latest craziness in the news with my humorous and lightning perspective. It's a fun, entertaining, and illuminating three hours. So let's stay informed together as we free thinkers unite weekdays from 4 to 7 on Santa Clarita's hometown station, AM 1220 and 98.1 FM. 
Do you suffer from peripheral neuropathy in your hands or feet? One drug after another, continuing numbness, tingling, burning pain, balance problems, decreased quality of life? Are you experimenting with drugs like Lyrica, Neurontin, Gabapentin, Cymbalta, with limited success and your doctor telling you you just have to live with it? My name is Dr. Thomas Pilecki, DC, host of Get Better with Dr. Pilecki and founder of Neuropathy Dr. X. I'm here to tell you that there is now a non-invasive natural solution to your neuropathy right here in Santa Clarita, a solution that addresses the underlying causes and we're proud to say that we have an 87 to 97% success rate with neuropathy sufferers in getting their lives back. I'd like to invite you to our next seminar when we'll teach you how to reverse this deadly condition that affects over 50 million Americans today. To reserve your spot now, call 753-9340. This is a free seminar, but seating is limited. So call 753-9340 now. I listen to it all day, every day. Hometown, your hometown station. This is Mental Health Hookup with Barbara Wilson. I'm your host, Jason Downs. This is a special broadcast here at KHTS, your hometown station, because mental health is important to us, and we believe it is important to the well-being of all of us here in Santa Clarita. So we have Barbara Wilson here in the studio, and she has been talking about giving voice to mental health and uh, how difficult that can be. And how much uh, progress we've really made. In, mm-hmm. in fact, we our, our last caller, you know, brought up a really interesting topic that that has I, I feel like speaks right to the issue of of, of giving voice. Um, and over the break, Barbara was telling us a story about Whitney Houston and how she may have been a a lesbian, les, a lesbian um, but her family was so adamantly uh, against making that public and allowing that to sort of be a part of who she was um, that um, it was squelched and, and a marriage was forced upon her and, and she turned to drugs to cope. Uh, we hope that you will turn to mental health hookup or Barbara Wilson for help or someone like her, a therapist who can uh, help you give voice to the issues that you're dealing with. Because we all, we all are, we are all dealing with, with certain issues at certain, certain levels, right? So uh, I know I can, I can certainly, I'm a huge advocate for therapy. It's, it's helped me several times throughout my life, different stages. It's never easy, but very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And uh, often such a relief. So I I think in that way, maybe it is a a type of ease because it, it, it is to give voice to these certain things, as you say, in a safe space, even just speaking to someone um, in that safe space can be such a relief. So we don't have too much longer, I'd say about eight minutes, but again, we welcome anyone with a question for Barbara to call in 661-298-5487. We've been talking about giving voice to ourselves during these difficult times. We've been um, talking about, we've been talking about how often many of us sort of devote ourselves to serving others. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, oftentimes, you know, uh, talked about being a mother while the father is out of the house working or a father while the mother is out of the house working and how um, you're, you're serving others all day long and how do we find the balance? So let's talk a little bit more about balance and, mm-hmm. and how, how whether you're raising children or whether you're over donating your time <laughs> to wonderful causes uh, uh, around town, um, how how do we find that balance? You were talking a, a moment ago about that that hula hoop and 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 the pie that you cut into twenty four hours a day and and uh, the, I, the pie is twenty four hours. Yes, it cuts into thirds. 
Okay. I want to, I'm just going to repeat this for anybody who might be listening. Draw a circle on a piece of paper, and that's your pie. You divide it into thirds. Eight, eight, eight. So eight hours for sleeping. Eight hours for career building stuff, whatever that looks like for you. Working. Uh, working. Mm -hmm. Uh, working towards a project, project-based stuff. So some people are working, but they're not getting paid. And sometimes when I say the word work, people as associate that with a paycheck. Hmm. So that's why I just call it career, career stuff. Okay. Um, and then that leaves you eight hours for everything else, and that means self-care. So if you like to jog or whatever, time with your family, meal preparation, spirituality, whether that's church or meditation or yoga or whatever you do, friendship, time with your friends, you know, all of that comes out of only that eight hours. So what hop happens many times is that we get over-donating. I do. I get over-donated in career space, and then I'm not attending to my family time, my working out time, or whatever, maybe my time with friends. I kick that to the curb because I've got mm -hmm. this deadline to do. And so one of the things, I think if you just look at that pie chart every day as a visual, this is something that anyone can do at home. Mm -hmm. You know, I love people that have kids at home because then they have crayons usually. So if you can make a, a pie chart and put color in your three different eight-hour shifts in different colors, it's a quick visual reminder. You can put it on the mirror as you're so brushing just that your teeth. Just that just awareness. Just that awareness. Just that awareness. Is, it's a simple huh. little visual tool to remind yourself, okay, I have this 24 hours. I just woke up. How do I start my day? I like to start my day with uh, a little bit of uh, time for meditation and grounding and um, being grateful for all the things I do have uh, versus all the things I wish I had, want to have. Like I was on my way and I saw my dream car parked outside, you know. Uh, I don't have that car. But, you know, I'm grateful for the car I have and it's paid for. So I'm grateful for that. <laughs> so I like to start my day with, you know, what I'm grateful for. And then, you know, kind of set the energy of what my day, how is it I want it to go? You know, and, and just start that way. Then throughout the day, though, if you have that visual, you can, and you have it in a conspicuous place. I mean, you're married, so you might not want to put it where you brush your teeth. I, I don't know where you want to put it, but, you know, put it someplace where you can see it, maybe inside your car, that mm. you can kind of give yourself just a little quick reminder. Read. Yeah, it's like a little prompt. Well, so okay, so so if you have that reminder, right? We we have those those, those three pieces, those eight hours mm -hmm. per, uh, and one of and we recognize, okay, once we become aware of that, we recognize that something is out of balance. Okay, um, I could tell you right away that that my sleep is is out of balance, and that's very frustrating for me. I don't. I I've tried many different things, and I will continue to try, um, but. What, what would you say if one of those pieces is out of balance, we're working too much, we're over donating, we're not taking that time for ourself, what we become aware, and I, I hear that you're saying that that is the first step and helps a, a tremendous amount. Um, when do we know to come to you? You know what I mean? When, when do we say to ourselves, okay, this is out of balance enough that I need to call well, someone how, like Barbara? You know, maybe one of the things you might want to think about is – how long has it been out of balance? Hmm. I mean, it, I have a client, for example, who has bipolar disorder, and he does not like to take medication. Okay, so one of the first things that we do always is we start our sessions with, how's your sleep? Hmm. Next thing is, how's your food? Hmm. Because he has learned that when he doesn't sleep well or if he's oversleeping to where he's sleeping, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours a day and he's still just so tired, mm -hmm. you know, this is his clue as to how his bipolar is doing because he wants to manage his bipolar. He doesn't want his bipolar to manage him. 
So sleep and food intake, those are two key factors. If you're too tired to make instant oatmeal because you're just too, and you just mm -hmm. got done sleeping for 14 hours, <laughs> I'm going to say that's cause for concern. Absolutely. So if you find yourself out of balance <laughs> in either of these areas, these three areas, then you need to reach out and schedule an appointment with Barbara at mentalhealthhookup.org or by calling 661-799-7994. There's a live agent there 24 hours a day to, to set up an appointment for you. And there are, I mean, her office is right here in Valencia, so very close by. As always, I want to thank you so much, Barbara, for what you do and for being here today. I want to thank the amazing staff here at KHTS, the owners, Jerry and Carl, for their support Absolutely. of thank this you. program. Thank you. Our fantastic engineer, Patty Schwika. Uh, a pleasure to have you here on Mental Health Hookup. I'm Jason Downs, and you're listening to KHTS. Until next time, stay safe, stay informed. Stay and balanced. Stay balanced. Ha, <laughs> ha,